Tonight's big stories. President Marcos orders the Senate to lead discussions on charter change after some House lawmakers had already launched ground campaigns for a people's initiative. Transport groups Piston and Maribela are set to hold another protest against the PUV modernization program. The LKFRB, meanwhile, will begin apprehending those operating without participating in consolidation beginning February. And the family of late actor Ronaldo Valdez demands an apology from the national police over lapses in their investigation into his death. Welcome to The Big Story. I'm Gretchen Paul. I'm Aracel Halili. And I'm Sean Yao. Well, it is a new week and we have a new update on charter change. I'm guessing um, still the same old topic. Mm -hmm. Pero parang medyo nag-iiba ang uh, mga boses. This time, it's the Senate now prioritizing moves to amend the Constitution. After President Marcos said, it is the upper house that should take the lead in those discussions. Senate President Mick Zubiri himself filed a resolution for that, and here is what he said. This is to avert a constitutional crisis between the House of Representatives and the Senate. And to make it clear uh, that there are no other planned provisions or amendments on any other thing but purely economic in nature. This resolution, of course, follows issues on the People's Initiative being launched by some congressmen as means of amending the Charter. Among House lawmakers' proposals is to allow the House and Senate to vote jointly, to vote jointly on Chacha, something that senators strongly protested. That's according to Zubiri. The Senate President notes that the upper house will lose its voice under a joint voting of Congress, given that there are only 24 senators against over 300 members of the House. Alam mo, lahat ng mga kasamahan ko, atat na atat na umatake. At sabi ko sa kanila, pag lumaban tayo, there's a point of no return. Kasi kung magkakainitan ng dugo ang House and uh, Senate, paano, na, paano natin may papasay yung mga batas natin? When Senator Zubiri found out about the People's Initiative, he said he immediately called for a private meeting with President Marcos. Last week, the Senate President had also met separately with House Speaker Romualdez to discuss charter change. And again on January 11, when the two leaders of Congress held a meeting with the President. Sabi niya sa akin at kay Speaker, sabi niya, why doesn't the Senate take the lead in the discussions of the economic provisions and then you approve your version which the House can adopt? So that was the position of the President. And I'd like to thank the President for his comment that the PI is too divisive. And he even mentioned news items from the major networks that he watched the night before. That sabi, oh, nagkakagulo na, bakit nagkakaganyan, uh, uh, may bayaran. Now, ang tanong, ano nga bang provisions sa charter? And Ang gustong amyendahan ng Senado? Well, according to the resolution which was signed by Zubiri, Senate President Pro Tempore Lauren Ligarda and Senator Sonny Angara, they want to limit amendments to certain economic provisions, particularly on education, public services, and advertising. They say they will not open Philippine lands for foreign ownership. Ang tanong ngayon, isa pang tanong maseno, will this resolution get enough votes in the Senate? And what are House Speaker Romualdez's thoughts on this? We'll be asking these questions to our mobile journalist, Yeda Pascual. Yeda, ano ang sagot? Sean, Senate President Mig Zubiri says that even though only limited economic provisions are proposed to be amended, he is confident that the resolution will get enough votes at the Senate for it to pass. That's 3 fourth or 18 centers out of the 24 total. Zubiri also clarified that no political provisions will be amended and that there will absolutely be no talks on the proposed term extension for any position. Pero ang tanong, payag ba si Speaker Romualdez na ang tanging gagaluin sa Konstitusyon ay ang ilang economic provisions? Hear what Zubiri said. Well, ang binabanggit niya palagi, eh, dyan lang naman siya gustong mag-amend eh, dahil sa economic provisions. 
Zubiri also hopes that now that the president said that the Senate should lead the talks on Chacha, signature campaigns for the People's Initiative on the ground will also stop. Zubiri says they will no, not convene a joint position for a turtle change. Senators will hold separate discussions through the Subcommittee on Constitutional Amendments. Senator Sonny Angara was chosen to lead the subcommittee and not Senator Robin Padilla, even though he is the chairman of the panel. If Padilla refuses to give the task to Angara, Zubiri says they might convene as a committee of the whole, where all senators will be part of the discussion. Sean, Senate discussion on Chacha will begin this month. Sean? Alright, talagang napakarami pang tanong. Maraming salamat, Yeda Pascual. Is this the right time for charter change? Who better to ask that question to than one of the framers of the 1987 Constitution himself? We have with us on the show tonight, Attorney Christian Monsod. Magandang gabi po sa inyo. Magandang po. Okay, Attorney, let's first go into the economic provisions that the Senate is looking into, particularly on advertising, public services, and also education. Um, can you tell us uh, what was the mindset of the framers of the Constitution um, give it, uh, giving uh, limits to foreign ownership in those three sectors? Well, you know, it's not only those three sectors. Uh, I'm surprised that the Senate... Uh, uh, even even once those uh, provisions, for example, on public services, there is already a Republic Act one one six five nine, that's uh, that uh, solved the problem by uh, distinguishing between public utility and uh, public services. So, uh, what is the Senate uh, looking for when uh, with this uh, with this law? Uh, pwede nang 100% ownership on telecommunications and transportation and other uh, economic activities. So I'm surprised that this is one of the provisions that they will uh, uh, examine. Now, are you, you, you know, among education, uh, I think it's a very, it's a very, uh, very important issue to us, to our people. Kasi, if you change, if you insert in that provision, unless otherwise provided by law, it means that uh, the Congress can give 100% ownership for a university or a school. And it can be anything. It can be an American, I know Harvard, it can be London School of Economics, but it, but it, it can also be, it can also be a uh, it can also be, it can also be a, a Chinese university, right? So, um, well, that's good that uh, the Senate uh, wants to take the lead on it. And the president should have recommended the, to the Senate to read the Philippine Development Plan. I say, uh, maybe they have read it, but uh, if, you, if you have read it, um, there is not a single provision in the Philippine Development Plan to fill the you know, to fulfill the uh, the programs and targets, there is not a single uh, provision that says that there must be charter change in order to achieve or fulfill these programs. This is for <clears throat> Philippine Development Plan 2023 to 2028 by NEDA, and the chairman of NEDA is the president, and and the president assigned that. Uh, Philippine Development Plan. Siguro, uh, and, and I, I, I trust uh, the senators know this, that you should study that and see whether it's correct. And maybe they would like to change some of the economic provision, but why the three? Why the three? Because they don't like land to be included, that they're, they're correct. Uh, it's a very bad news from ating mga kababayan kung magpwedeng 100% ownership dyan because uh, even the the foreign chambers of commerce of the Philippines they admit na pag pwede ang ownership of uh, land by foreigners na tataas ang presyo ng lupa na hindi na kaya ng mga mahihirap kaya tama yon kaya yung Philippine na yung natural resources tama din sila kasi under Article 12 Section 2 with respect to minerals minerals oils and all that there can be a mining company that uh, be 100% uh, foreign in partnership with the Philippine government 
para naman protektahin ang mga ang tinatawag natin uh, environmental effects and so on and so forth. So, yung tatlong yun, uh, ganun na ang estado. Ngayon, yung advertising, as far as I know, na they, that's been solved because there is a division or separation of the creative factor and and the advertising, the creative work in advertising, and waiting to get the foreigners to participate in the creative work. Uh, okay. So, second, okay. the media that's open already. The world is open uh -huh. Uh -huh. with internet, with all kinds of. Uh, we can even watch uh, foreign television and so. Uh -huh. So, is it necessary to even have those three um, uh, economic provisions? Uh -uh. Attorney Monsod, yun nga yung uh, gusto ko uh, itanong sa'yo. Right. Uh, if we backtrack a little bit, no, nung unang lumabas tong uh, Cha Cha 2023 edition, this was right before Christmas, and I'm sure you've been kept abreast, and I'm sure you've gotten so many questions. We're also familiar with your thoughts, no, every time ma bring up itong uh, matter of charter change. Um, Ang tanong ko lang, napanood niyo po ba yung TV ad na Edsa Puera? What did you think about it? Because what they're saying is that walang provision. It's, no, a, lot of, sa, it's sa a lot of nonsense. It's not worth commenting on. Okay. Right? Now, let, let me add one more thing. Mm -hmm. Ang ating presidente, he has traveled a lot to many countries in order to promote the interests of the country. And he's very proud to say that there were what, about uh, $73 billion of investment pledges that's terrific now is there a condition of charter change in any of these investment pledges well not. because if there were he would have told our our people about it to be truthful about the whole thing Pero, voila. so why why are there uh, uh, even you know, the house and so on want to to to, to change their economic provisions and the senate well, if they want those three, those are really meaningless as far as concerned, except education. Tanong nyo sa mga tao natin, papayag ba sila mayroong uh, university dito that's 100% owned by Chinese? Papayag ba sila? Tanong yung, nyo. Yung sa butuhan mga po, mga attorney, um, uh, a lot are saying no, na the 1987 charter did not provide specifics when it comes to yun nga, yung uh, butuhan, dapat ma-joint yung both houses of uh, of no, wait, Congress. Just a minute. We're talking about now the, the, the People's Initiative? Yes. Yes, Attorney. Uh, okay. uh, what are one. your thoughts, Number no? One. When you guys were uh, framing the 1987 Constitution, ano po yung totoong inisip ninyo, yung original thought ninyo around the People's Initiative? How, ideally, no? How was it supposed to proceed? At paano yung well, galawan? The, the People's Initiative was discussed in, uh, a lot. And uh, we came down to the conclusion that it should be limited to uh, amendments uh, because it would be too complicated to say, you know, revisions, big revisions, or changing a constitution and uh, literally changing the constitution. So yes, limited to amendments. But there's one thing you should know about uh, People's Initiative. If you read the decisions of the Supreme Court in 1997, in the case of uh, uh, Santiago, and in uh, 2009, in the case of Lambino, the Supreme Court pointed out that there is no law on the implementation of people's initiative. So, it will not work anyway, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, it, it, on, on, on the other, on, on the second uh, reason, mm -hmm. is I think that when, if it is put into uh, amendments na voting jointly that disempowers the senate and the NC senate president should be really talked about that already mm -hmm. uh that that is a revision and not an amendment mm -hmm. so for the two reasons one is that in the first place there's no law implementing it and and the uh, congress was advised by the supreme court to mm -hmm. to enact a law and congress did not just like they have forgotten to pass an anti-dynasty law that's mm -hmm. very important to our people. Diba? At so, na pong difference ng amendments it will not revision. prosper, that people's initiative, anyway. Ano it will pong, not prosper. Anyway. Ano pong difference nun, para lang po sa mga hindi masyadong familiar with the law, ano pong difference ng amendment sa revision? 
Well, it depends. Sabi ng Supreme Court dun sa Lambino case, na when, it's, it's, when it is a basic principle in the design of the Constitution, it's a revision. Now, when you disempower the Senate, well, in, kasi sa ating law, yung system of checks and balances is not only about the three big departments of government. It's also within the legislature. That's why there are two separate bodies there, the Senate and the House. And they, they have different functions, they have you know, the accountabilities, and so on. Tapos, you cannot disempower the Senate. It violates the system of checks and balances within the executive, which is part of the design of the Constitution. Okay, we understand that. Attorney, um, going back lang po dun sa economic provisions na pinag-uusapan natin kanina, is it really possible if naging successful sila na pag-usapan talaga itong charter change sa legislative department, is it really possible to just limit yung usapin dito sa economic provisions at saka yung public services, advertising, and education? Or uh, meron bang posible silang gawin para hindi... Maungkat well, yung mga issues, for example, put, the term yes. extension. Let me put it this way. Mm. The, they will, the, what they're saying is they will be, they will, they're willing to have a constituent assembly where a constituent assembly not only can amend but can revise the constitution and can even write a new constitution, a constituent assembly. So let's ask, what is the intent? And sabi ng Senate, uh, they're willing to consider yung three uh, provisions na lalagyan ng unless otherwise provided by law. To me, uh, yung education lang is I'm worried about that. Uh, mm -hmm. kung, kung gusto ng mga tao yan. Pero yung public services, sold na yan mm -hmm. because of Republic Act Women's <laughs> uh, Republic Act on Public Utilities and, uh, and uh, Public Services Decision. Di ba yung advertising, what's that? I mean, it's not that important yeah, mm -hmm. in the scheme of things. In our, in our development, diba? And there, there are already practical ways by which the ad advertising industry has, has addressed this mm -hmm. provision. Right, so bottom line, um, what you're saying, attorney, is that everything can be done via amendment, no? Kung may gusto silang baguhin na economic provisions, because yeah, it has been no, done No, I didn't before. say that. Uh -huh. not, I didn't say can everything can be done by amendment. So I, do... I said precisely that the uh, that the constituent assembly can revise and even write a new mm, constitution. Mm, 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 mm. But for example, eh, with regard to all these economic provisions, since yun naman lagi yung binabandera ng mga gusto mag -cha -cha, um, are all the economic provisions, kumbaga, kailangan po ba na may revision or sapat na Nasasabi yung amin? Yun, eh. mm. Nasasabi ko na, there are six. Mm. Correct? Land, natural resources, public utilities, uh, advertising, education, and media. Those are the economic provisions they're targeting to uh, insert the phrase, and the, phrase, uh, the phrase unless otherwise provided by law. Sa akin, yung, yung paglagay nun uh, is all for money because then the, 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 the Congress will be open to suggestions, for example, on land. Sasabihin nila, oh, anong gusto nyo? Uh, 60%, 100%. Mm -hmm. Sasabihin sa, sa mining, anong gusto nyo? Not 40, gusto ko 51. Eh, may presyo yan. You know, the foreign investors, the big important foreign investors, know about our country. They know about corruption. They know about uh, 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 yung, uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, amendments or, or laws, you know, uh, that, that can be done with money. So, I'll just give you an example. Right? About three, four years ago, there was what, a number of Japanese companies who were leaving China. Marami sila. Ang sabi nila, destination nila apat. Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, Philippines. Number four tayo. Number four. And these are manufacturing companies. Uh, manufacturing companies under our constitution can be 100% foreign. Mm -hmm. So why didn't they come to the Philippines? Ang, ang sabi ng Chamber of Commerce of Japan, uh, because of the investment climate. Mm. What is investment climate? You, know? you can say, well, infrastructure, the, the you know, yung, uh, regulatory Responses. decisions, mm -hmm. uh, and also corruption. Wait, Attorney, can I confirm yeah. this with you since a constituent... So they did not come to the Philippines, uh -oh. right? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, okay. Uh, since the Constituent Assembly, as you mentioned, um, has the power to not only revise but rewrite a new constitution, does that mean that if we get into the discussion of economic uh, revisions, then we also open uh, the discussion for political revisions and there is no stopping uh, that? That's, that's up to them. Uh -oh. That's up to them. Uh, what, what can that, be done uh, to limit the, Senate, the discussion? Uh, now that the Senate has been given the lead, and uh, Senator uh, Subiri has said that they will limit uh, yung constituent assembly to just these three economic uh, provisions. Well, that's great, right? Let them debate that, let yeah. them vote on that, uh, so, as far as I'm concerned, okay? Mm -hmm. Attorney, medyo matagal nang pinag-uusapan tong charter change eh. Parang especially during the time of uh, former President uh, Rodrigo Duterte. Pero walang nangyari. But uh, well, with I'll the things you. going on right now, you think this will prosper? Well, I'll tell you, the one who we we have uh, we have uh, been able to to stop six charter changes, uh, proposals, six charter proposals for Chacha. And the the biggest uh, the biggest uh, proposal was of course the the one uh, Puno Committee that uh, Duterte uh, commissioned to draft a new constitution that was submitted to President Duterte in 2018. But uh, uh, in 2019, President Duterte withdrew his proposal. You, you remember that? Yes. He withdrew his proposal. Natakot siguro siya, sabi niya, well, let the future governments handle a new constitution. Kasi uh, yung uh, NEDA at the time and the finance department said that, you know, this shift to parliamentary, um, yung federal government is, you, you don't know. There are unforeseen circumstances here. It's very risky. And they did not think it's a good idea. They did not support the president. Maybe that's one of the reasons the president... Uh, uh, we drew support for it uh, because it was supposed to be uh, uh, sent to the people in a previous in 2019, and they, they were hoping that the transition would take three years to 2022. Right? Well, I'll tell you something about the shift to federated uh, system. Uh, there will be, under the proposal of the Puno Committee, a transition government with absolute powers. Right? Absolute powers during the transition. Sabi nila, it will be only three years. But according to President Abueba of the University of the Philippines, who is an advocate of federalism, sabi niya, no, that will take more than that, maybe eight, maybe maybe ten years. Why? Because of the 18 regions, only three have the capability to be autonomous regions. Right? Number two, and one of the one of the problems of federalism. It, does, it strengthens whoever is in power at the time. So when you have 18 uh, clans, 18 clans uh, on top of 18 um, uh, regions, they will have more power and in other words, there will be more power uh, by them, right? You know, you know, because that's the situation in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. That's the context of the Philippines mm -hmm. for that for that shift to federalism. It will result in even stronger dynastic families and the feudalism, feudalism that we're trying to dismantle for centuries. All right. Thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight and for weighing in on a Charter Change. One of the framers of the 1987 Constitution, Attorney Christian Monsod, maraming salamat po. Up next, the consultation deadline has lapsed, but transport protests continue. This time, transport groups are calling on President Marcos to restore the revoked franchises of drivers who chose not to consolidate. More on that when the big story returns.
you're still watching The Big Story here on One News. The other big story today, transport groups Piston and Manibela set to protest yet again the PUV modernization program. The demonstration is set to commence at UP Diliman and proceed toward Mendiola at around 9 a.m. This protest action will end at the Supreme Court, where transport groups will launch a short program. According to Piston President Modi Florada, Floranda, the primary objective of the protest is to convince President Mongo Marcos to restore the revoked franchises of drivers and operators who could not consolidate. Ang uh, pinakalayunin ng uh, protesta una ay, uh, ay panawagan natin kay BBM na baguhin niya yung kanyang statement na sinasabi nga na hindi na tayo papayagan na makapag, uh, uh, makapag-stay na, no? o makapag-renew ng ating mga prangkisa. At uh, siyempre, ang, pinaka, ang pangalwa rito ay uh, nagano rin tayo na sana ay uh, maglabas ng, uh, ng uh, TRO, ang uh, Korte Suprema Batay, do sa ipinail natin. Pero kung madaming tutol sa modernization program, marami rin namang pabor. Earlier today, some transport groups that support the PUV modernization program filed their own motion to intervene in the Supreme Court. They are against the requested TRO by Pison. According to groups like Pasang Masda, Acto, El Top, and Alto Dap, the program system is actually well organized. They also argue that allegations of exploitation in franchise consolidation and low profits for cooperatives are not true. Ang mga operators affected po ang magkakasama dyan. In short, sila po ang may-ari ng korporasyon, sila mismo ang magpapatakbo ng kanilang negosyo. Walang third party na mag i dito. So eto na nga. <laughs> Despite the opposition from some transport groups, the LTFRB maintained its stance that there is no turning back on the PUV modernization program. That's why starting February, the agency will begin apprehending those operating without participating in consolidation. Under the program, the franchises of cheap knees that did not register for consolidation have been automatically revoked this year. There were only granted an extension until the end of January. Hence, they will be considered as koloru starting next month. So, paano malalaman ng LTFRB if kolorum yung jeepney or hindi? Let's listen to this. We will have a random check ng mga jeepney. Titignan po namin yung kanilang papeles. Pangalawa po, eventually we will be issuing stickers sa mga parang yung nakikita po ninyo sa pinapaskel ng LTO para ma-determine po namin kung yung isang ang jeep ay miyembro po ng isang consolidated entity. Also, if you recall last week, Ibon Foundation warned about yung pagtaas ng pamasahay by up to 50 pesos. But according to the LTFRB, the public should not worry about fare increases. The agency says that the difference between the fares of modern cheapies and traditional cheapies has only increased by 2 pesos since the program started in 2017. As we've also discussed among the problems of GP drivers and operators is the cost of modern GPs. But one GP manufacturer in the country has launched its affordable version of an e-jeepney dubbed Francisco Jeepney. Let's get to know more about this and his thoughts on modern GPs we have with us. Live via Zoom, Elmer Francisco, Chairman and CEO of eFrancisco Motor Corporation. Good evening, Elmer. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hi, good evening, Gretchen, Maricel, and Sean. Okay, una -una, Thank you for having me here. Oh, Nag-viral itong uh, Francisco GP <laughs> dahil 985,000 pesos lang ang uh, cost niya compared to the other jeepneys, 1.6 and above. How were you able to do this? Actually, ang nakakagulat yung presyo nila. Eh. Hindi yung presyo namin. <laughs> you know why? Uh, we've been building jeepneys for 77 years, ng Francisco Motors. Ako, personally, 31 years. So, nagulat talaga ako kung bakit lumaki ng ganon yung presyo ng, ano, ng modernized jeepneys. And the biggest factor dun, dun is yung, ano, yung drivetrains. Because we have been relying on, ano, on foreign manufacturers um, with regards to the, to the engines and transmission, of which, uh, sabi ko nga, bakit ganon kamahal? So, sabi ko sa kanila, gagawa na lang kami ng sarili. So, we created our own uh, it's full electric uh, drivetrain. So, yung Francisco Jeepney, uh, full electric na yan lahat. 
Elmer, alam mo, last week, no, naisip namin, na, nakita namin may feature about your jeepney. We liked how it still looks like the Pinoy traditional jeepney. Um, and we were like, why don't we invite Elmer? Because ang narinig namin na isang uh, magandang uh, point is that meron kayong terms, tapos kayo na raw yung mag-handle ng financing for jeepney drivers who might be interested in a an uh, e-Francisco uh, jeepney. Totoo ba ito? And can you tell us how, how this works? Yes. Actually, hinimoy ko yan dun sa congressional inquiry. So first, um, you can still see the iconic design of the jeepney. Uh, we're retaining that design because it's part of our culture. So if you remove it and, and replace it with uh, minibuses uh, coming from China or from other countries, um, it's like taking away a piece of our identity. So yung mga foreigners, pag pupunta sa Philippines, nagpapapicture sa jeepney. So ngayon, pagdating ng mga foreigners, makikita nila, minibus galing China. So hindi na lang sila magpapapicture. Mm. Diba? So nawala na yung jeepney. Now regarding the price, um, I announced um, last ano, Bonifacio Day, November 30, mm. yung price ng, ano, ng bagong Francisco jeepney, which is 985000 Then, uh, sinabi ko nga sa, ano, natin, sa mga congressman, na uh, 985000 then you can just um, give a down payment or a reservation fee of 50,000 pesos, so 935,000 pesos na lang siya, then ano, we can avail of ano, equity subsidy from DOTR amounting to 280,000 pesos per unit. Mm -hmm. So ang magiging balance nila, 655,000 na lang. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we can offer uh, um, ano, yung hulugan or yung amortization with mm -hmm. zero interest. Mm -hmm. Like for, for example, kung magbabayad sila ng 20,000 pesos, uh, with zero interest, less than three years, bayad na nila yung, ano, yung jeepney nila. So this is not new for Francisco Motors because uh, over seven decades, uh, we've been doing that. Kaya nga maraming mga OFWs, pati mga ordinaryong manggagawang Pilipino, na nakakabili ng, ano, ng Francisco jeepney. So nag-OFW sila, malaki yung sweldo nila ron, nakaka-uwi sila, nakakapagpundar sila ng, ano, ng jeepney na panghanap buhay para mapaaral nila yung mga anak nila. So that's basically what we're doing. So... Uh, nagtataka talaga ako bakit sobrang mahal ng mga ano ng mga imported na modernized units. Tinutulungan ba kayo ng LTF or B Elmer na i-push ang uh, locally made uh, jeepney natin? Or Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah how has actually, that been yeah. for you? Yeah. Yeah, so sa ngayon, alam mo, sabi ko nga in fairness sa mga ano sa DOTR kay Secretary Bautista, pati sa mga nakaupo ngayon sa LTF RB and OTC minana na nila yung problema ngyan from the previous administration. Uh, I will admit, nung before, before sa kanila, hirap na hirap talaga kami yung mga ano mga local manufacturers to compete with uh, the foreign brands. So that's why uh, we decided uh, to do it on our own and build our own drive trains. Kasi sarili mong gobyerno yun pa hirap sa yon, ba? But now uh, mas ano eh, mas open ang ano ang Department of Transportation Remember, ngayon sa mga local manufacturer. parte kayo na, ano, sabi mo, seven decades nyo ginagawa to. Saan parte kayo nahirapan noon? Uh, Ay, mm, makapasok yes. sa, as a supplier? Was no, that the, actually, you know? actually, alam mo, uh, uh, through ano, seven decades, eight presidential administrations na yung dinaanan ng Francisco Motors. From Manuel Rojas uh, up to Bongbong Marcos. Iba-iba ang administration, iba-iba yung, ano, yung agenda, iba-iba yung patakaran. So, uh, nakikita natin yung, ano, yung ups and downs ng, ano, ng automotive industry sa Pilipinas. So, ang nahirapan tayo at first, uh, alam mo, 1980s pa lang may, ano na, meron ng electric jeep ni Francisco Motors. 1980s. Pero, matagal na tayong nag, ano, nagpupush niyan. Nagkaroon lang ng law about it. Yung, ang ano yung Evida law, nagkaroon na ng law no April 2022. Ganong katagal. So ngayon pa lang nagkaroon ng law enabling uh, the manufacturing of ano electric vehicles dito sa Pilipinas. So we're thankful sa mga ano natin, mga mambabatas natin na finally nagkaroon na ng ganyan law. Now we can uh, produce our own uh, drivetrains at hindi na tayo asa sa mga foreign manufacturers. Mm. Pero kanina so na banggit mo yung tungkol sa design ng Jeep. Now let's talk about the quality. Kasi yung sinasabi kanina ng LTFRB, three shifts daw eh. Mm. Yung uh, magpapasada dun sa modern Jeep para magkaroon sila ng enough time, makakuha ng income out of this. Mm -hmm. Kakayanin ba to? 
ng uh, modern jeepney. And usually, yung ganyang kalidad ng jeep, gaano katagal siya? Tumatagal before before maka-experience ng any problem. Okay. First, dun sa ano muna, sa kita, yung cost. With the Francisco jeepney, hindi mo kailangan mag-triple shift para kumita uh, sa jeepney kasi mura nga. Malaking mura, it's one third of the price ng mga foreign ano, mga foreign brands. So hindi kailangan pahirapan yung mga drivers natin at, at yung mga operators, that's first. Um, next, yung quality and durability. Alam mo, yung mga ginawa ng Francisco Motors ng mga jeepneys 30 to 50 years ago, hanggang ngayon tumatakbo pa rin. Ay yung pa rin yung ginagamit nila until now. So kaya tiwala yung mga operators natin sa Francisco Motors. Kasi kapag gumawa ng sasakyan ng Francisco Motors, it's built to last. Mm -mm. Hindi yan yung katulad ng mga foreign brands na mayroong planned obsolescence. Mm -mm. Planned obsolescence, it's a marketing strategy na every couple of years, like five years or so, sira na para bibili ka ulit ng bago. So ang Francisco Jeep needs built to last. Um, and it's true, uh, even with, uh, no, with the new Francisco Jeepney, ganun pa rin. Paano pa ito? Uh, yung, ano to? Chinacharge ba ito? Or kasi may hybrid, hybrid di ba, na parang gas? Electric? Pero, or... oh, oh, how does this work? Yes. So yung first 1,000 Jeepneys, na electric Jeepneys na i-roll out ng ano, Francisco Motors uh, starting ng second quarter ng 2024, it's full electric. So lahat ng lugar na magde-deploy tayo ng full electric Jeepneys, Francisco Motors din yung ano, magsiset up ng mga ano, charging stations, okay. mga fast charging stations. But um, we have um, gone uh, a step further than that. We have another company, it's called ano, HDEX Group, um, of which um, we will introduce a hybrid hydrogen system. Uh, it will be installed in our jeepneys, in our electric jeepneys, para maski tumatakbo, uh, it's charging. So it will augment, it will ano, uh, minimize or even remove the range anxiety. Okay, uh, very exciting. No? So, parang hydrogen cell and to charge while you're using it. So, uh, but I'm so curious, Elmer. May orders na ba? I know medyo recent lang yung pag-announce ninyo at yung special promo for the first 1,000 units. Kamusta yung uptake no? sa mga drivers and operators natin? Yes, actually, yun yung hindi natin problema, yung orders. Kasi karamihan nga ng, <laughs> karamihan ng mga, ano natin, ng mga transport operators had been our customers for decades. Uh -huh. Yung mga tatay nila, mga lolo pa nila, customer na natin. Uh -huh. They've been asking me for for the past five to six years, Sir, kailan mo ilalabas yung Francisco Jeep ni na bago? At sinasagot ko sa kanila, pinapababa ko pa yung presyo. Uh -huh. And as promised, pinababa ko talaga yung presyo. Kaya ngayon, masaya-masaya sila. So when we announced our price, uh, our orders, um, lumampas na ng 50,000 units. Galing. Ganun pa namin. So, okay, hindi namin kaya deliver yun ng two years, <laughs> three years. May, may QR, QR code system din ito, di ba? Tapos Wi-Fi pa. Ha, how does yes. that work? Yes. So, yung features niya, uh, it complies with the Philippine national standards. So, yung ano, yung uh, measurements. So, nakakatayo ka na sa loob. Hindi ka na yuyuko. Then, yung oh. main entrance and exit na sa front right side, katabi ng driver. Sa likod, meron pa rin tayong emergency exit which doubles as uh, emergency entrance for PWD passengers kasi meron niyang ano, built-in ramp sa likod for wheelchair passengers. Then it's full air-conditioned, uh, may CCTV, uh, four-channel CCTV system, uh, meron tayong dash cam, then meron din tayong automated fare collection system and you can book your trips in advance. So pag, pag sumakay ka, pwedeng itatap mo na lang yung card mo or yung QR code ng phone mo. Uh, to check in and check out. Okay. Elmer, last, last question na lang, no? uh, mabilis ang math lang. Ang yes. last, last time no, doon sa hearing, sinasabi nila, eh, kung 2.8 million yung binili mong jeep, kailangan mo kumita ng 7,000 kada araw. Ngayon, kung binili mo ang Francisco e-jeep or e-Francis, yung modern jeep din ninyo, sa presyong 985,000, magkano ang kailangang i-boundary kada araw para mabayaran yung monthly amortization? Actually, hindi na yun yung tinitignan namin. Alam mo, kung papanoorin mo yung, ano, yung congressional inquiry, ang tanong ko sa kanila, bakit natin inaalam yung pwede na? Why are we asking for how much uh, for our transport operators and drivers to survive? Bakit hindi natin tanongin kung paano sila kikita na mas malaki at mas gaganda yung buhay nila? Diba? So, yun sa atin, aside from tataas yung income nila by, ano, by at least 80%, uh, kasi first, brand new yan, less maintenance. Walang problema. So bababa yung cost of, ano nila, cost of uh, operations. 
then wala na rin yung ano, crudo or diesel mm-hmm. kasi charging na yan. So at the same distance, less than half yung cost ng charging dun sa cost ng fuel. Mm-hmm. So bumaba yung expenses nila. Then, 30 passenger capacity mm-hmm. na to. Kasi nakaupo, 11 plus 11. Then pwede nakatayo na 8 sa loob. So 30 passengers compared to the old uh, traditional jeepney na hanggang 18 passengers lang. So 30 passengers. Tumaas yung gross revenue nila. Bumaba yung um, ano nila, yung uh, operating expenses. So yung profit margin nila, tumaas. So aside from mas mababa yung magiging amortization nila dito sa Francisco Jeepney, which is it could be just a thousand or less, di ba? Kung gano'n ang gagawin natin. Mm-hmm. Unlike doon sa 7,000 na sinasabi nila for a 2.8 mm-hmm. million vehicle, which is really unjust for me. So, pinagkakakwartahan nila yung mga Pilipino to think na Euro 4 diesel pa yung gamit nilang engine, which is obsolete na sa ibang bansa. <laughs> oh, so, pinatapo oh. nila sa atin yung mga basura nila. Diba? So, what we are doing is we are uh, giving the best technology to our fellow Filipinos. Why is it that when you talk about the PUV modernization, I get excited? I mean, only now. <laughs> you know why? I think because <laughs> alam mo, at the same time, buhay yung manufacturing sector natin. Ayun yung na. innovation oh, natin, oh. nakagawa sila ng sarili nilang drive-train. Saka drive hindi nasuppress yung Philippine spirit. Yeah, That's pero nasa 50 ano? daw ah, yung oh. in ng LTFRB. Na, na suppliers. Manufacturers, suppliers. Mm-hmm. So, syempre, mas maganda kung unahin natin yung local manufacturers. Okay. I, really, I really don't think may mabibenta pa sila. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maganda tanong, na diba? kayo, Elmer. So, <laughs> tanong, tanong nga ng mga congressman doon sa mga transport groups na nandun sa Congress, anong bibili nyo? Yung tagtatatlong milyon na made in China na minibus? O yung Francisco Jeep ni 9, na 985,000 lang na gawa ng mga manggagawang Pilipino? Oh. Lahat sila ang answer Francisco Motors. Oh. Wala ni isa sa kanila sumagot ng otherwise. So sabi ko nga, <laughs> We welcome foreign manufacturers. Good luck na lang kung kaya nilang tapatan yung presyo. <laughs> well, Elmer, yeah. just by, you know, just by uh, your work, we can say we do agree with that. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Keep it up. And good luck uh, with uh, the next thousand batches of jeepneys <laughs> that you will produce for us. Uh, Elmer Francisco, Chairman and CEO of E. Francisco Motor Corporation. Thank you. Gracias, Marisa. Up next, actor-director Jano Gibbs is seeking a public apology from the PNP following the leakage of photos and videos of the passing of his father, Ronaldo Valdez. That and more when the big story returns. Keep it here. We are still watching the big story here on One News. The family of the late veteran actor Ronaldo Valdez wants a public apology from the national police over the mishandling of investigations into his death. Joining us, joining us tonight is Brian Baza, who covered this today for the details. Brian, welcome. Hello. Welcome. Hello. welcome. Hello. Hello. You're here. Thank you for having me. So, so you, 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 you
alam nyo, ladies, it's been nearly a month since Ronaldo Valdez died. But for Jano and uh, the Bereave family, the trauma remains, di ba? Uh, you know, they're condemning how the police handled the case. Mm. As we know, the death of Valdez stirred controversy, not just because it's untimely, but also because sensitive information got leaked online. First, the video of the actor's body mm -hmm. while inside the crime scene. That clip was recorded by the first responder, supposedly for the docu documentation, mm -hmm. but it eventually made the rounds on social media. And then then there's Jana's sworn statement, and let's not forget the mm -hmm. photographs of him undergoing a gunpowder test. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't stop there. Pa. Jano tells the media nine days after his father died, the police asked him several things, including reenacting what he saw in the crime scene. So diba, all of that led them to believe mm -hmm. that there were lapses in the probe, hence the demand for a public apology from the police and the officers directly accountable for the investigation. Mm -hmm. So, so sige, go ahead. Okay, no, ang lala pala. Kasi I know Iba some eh. of the things, pero uh, if you put all the, pag nilista mong ganun, na uh, all the lapses. Wait, kaya marami tayong alam eh. Kasi marami rin nag-leak. Ang dami <laughs> nag-leak. Yeah, nakita rin natin. Creating confusion is, over the, the case. That's right. So, Naka may, may nalino na? Oh, is there, or, yeah, is there or, an, an update is? on the investigation? What's the latest update from the police? Well, hindi kasi masyadong, hindi kasi masyadong, hindi kasi masyadong, uh, Pinag-usapan no? uh, yung, yung result ng investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, kasi kitang-kita ko kasi yung, mm -hmm. ano, yung, yung hurt ng family. Uh -huh. Again, it's been a month, pero parang ano pa rin, eh, nandun pa rin yung emotional wound. Uh -huh. diba? Especially that they, they haven't got the chance to mourn in private. Yes. Diba? Di, di pa sila nakakapag-grieve uh, you know, in peace. Mm -hmm. considering so that was not talked about. That was not the uh, one of the updates in this press con. Yeah. It was Kumbaga, really Brian, only... I guess, you know, Ang tinatanong namin is, this is a mostly a family press con, not a police press con na update sa kaso. Ito na yung alam natin. Is it mostly like uh, the family uh, giving their thoughts on what happened? Yes. Uh, kanina sa press con, mm -hmm. uh, also joining them was the legal team headed by uh, Attorney Lorna Kapunan. As, mm -hmm. uh, diba? uh, kanina na, nandyan sila sa press con uh, and... Uh, kahit na medyo mabigat pa rin sa kalooban nila, they had to, mm -mm. to, to mm -mm. speak up, di ba? Yes. And uh, actually, yung kung nga, may late, ang, ang development, like at least right before we came on the air, was, mm. di ba, yun nga, yung three uh, QCPD uh, officers na tinanggal dahil dun sa nalik na video, di ba? So, ano yung plano nila dun sa tatlong police officers? Are they planning to file legal cases against those three? Uh, no further legal action for now, Mase, mm -hmm. no? Uh, at least, you know, sabi ni Jano, because mm -hmm. again, they want to, to mourn in peace, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. private, kasi mm -hmm. bakaro, lalo silang matroma mm -hmm. if they press charges, kasi syempre, at some point, kapag nag-file sila ng charges, ipaparecount sa kanila yung buong insidente. Nakakatroma yon, di ba? I mean, mm -hmm. that, that goes without saying. But Jano hopes uh, that by speaking, no, speaking to the media, that their tragedy will serve as a cautionary tale uh, so that no other bereaved family will suffer like mm -hmm. they're suffering now. But mm -hmm. of course, they made it clear mm -hmm. that they want public apology from the PNP and the Concerned Cops. Sabi nga ni Atty. Kapunan, mm -hmm. we rely no, on the responsibility of these people. Na, naniniwala kami na gagawin nila ito. Having said that, I'm sure, hinabol mo din yung side ng police. Um, yeah. Kasi sinabi nila, yeah. they're demanding, they want an apology. Uh, no, ang sabi ng uh, PNP. Yes, ito nga, Sean. Just a, et, yeah, oh, oh. Again, just before we, we got back on the air, just a few moments ago, Quezon City's top cop mm -hmm. issued an apology. Police Brigadier General Red Maranan says, and I quote, Tayo ay taos pusong humihingi na paumanhin doon sa sakit na naidulot ng paglabas ng video kung saan involved ang police natin, unquote. The QCPD acknowledges the lapse in judgment on the part of some of their personnel. Five cops are also facing administrative charges and apart from that, the police is planning to sue civil who are suspected of leaking the video because of course data privacy Pero teka, is uh, para malinaw lang yes. for everyone kasi minsan makikita tayo ng mga pictures ng crime scene yeah. videos ano ba yung pwede at ano yung hindi oh, ano ba yung protocol doon familiar ba tayo kung ano ba yung pwede nating ilabas oh, para kasi lang kasi kung wala diba may accident yung accident picture mo may nangyaring ano tapos na videohan mo tapos na post mo I mean, yeah, what, what, oh, ano po, that actually, Gretch, ito yung tinanong ko kay, kay Atty. Lorna kanina. Mm -hmm. Because let's remember that the video was taken by a cop. Uh -huh. Diba? And this cop was the first responder doon sa, 
sa siya crime scene, yung, di ba? Kung nang tinawagan, yeah. at, nakadating doon. Di ba? So, so, parang sabi nga ni Attorney Lorna, basic criminal law, if there's an investigation, you have to keep it private. Otherwise, you run the risk of tainting the investigation. Correct. Kasi yung understanding ko, eh, sila lang naman yung may okay. original footage, di ba? Ang police lang yung meron. na merong original footage yung police kasi na share na siya eh. Yes. Sa iba eh. So, may liability ba even yung ordinary yung citizens who share the video? Well, as like what we saw from the statement, mukhang uh, ipupursu din nila yung legal action against these identified civilians. Oh. Oo, oh, data privacy ang kanilang magiging violation. Okay. Pero, teka, teka lang, okay, gets ko na, okay, sige, baka gusto nung polis sabulin yung mga yun, pero sa kanila kasi nagsimula yun, at hindi sila ordinary meron na nakatayo doon. They're not bystanders standing there, tapos biglang may nagsalpo ka na kotse. Yeah. You know, they were responding. They were on duty. Yes. And they're police officers. So, um, I know they apologized, the QCPD apologized, right. etc. Though they fired these people, but moving forward, may gagawin ba silang mas malinaw na rules of engagement and SOP with regard to that, or wala pa silang sinasabi? Well, yan ang ating uh, babantayan in the coming days mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they guaranteed mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. yung itong sitwasyong ito is not reflective daw of mm -hmm. the character mm -hmm. of the Quezon City Police. Mm -hmm. diba? So, it, they are taking this seriously, they are taking the matter seriously mm -hmm. and they will make sure mm -hmm. that the people in, uh, directly involved or liable mm -hmm. dun sa lapses uh, will face you know, the necessary consequences. Well, speaking of uh, you know, rumors going around, one of uh, the rumors going around it, it implicates the family mm -hmm. um, as suspects in the death mm -hmm. of Ronaldo Valdez. Specifically, si Jano Gibbs, yung isa sa mga yon, mm -hmm. ah, nag-react ba? Na, nabanggit ba yon kanina? Actually, Gretsch, uh, Jano let out an expletive. Minura niya. No? Essentially, yung mga uh, nagpakalat ng kasinungalingan daw, uh, that's when we felt the hurt and anger. Mm -hmm. Kami yung mga nag-cover. Mm -hmm. We felt uh, the hurt and anger in the room. Tapos Jano read to us, kanina ha, binasa niya isa-isa. Pinakalanan niya yung mga vloggers. Uh, he read to us the false headlines and the clickbait titles uh -huh. made by some vloggers. You know, sabi nga niya, he doesn't mind mm -hmm. no, if mm -hmm. these titles or headlines had question marks or if they used the words, di umano, allegedly, like we always do, mm -hmm. di ba? Sometimes in our reports, we would do that often. Uh -huh. Pero kasi sabi niya, these headlines were statements. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they were good as, you know, accusations yes. that Jano was supposedly involved in his father's death. Then that's when he turned emotional. And, mm -hmm. you know, how I see it from inside the room, you know, Jano did not face the media today as a singer or an actor, even a comedian. Talagang, he faced us as a grieving son who had to deal with trauma mm -hmm. brought about mm -hmm. by the lapses, the accusations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He stresses that he's speaking up so that no other person will experience what mm -hmm. he and his will family Will he file are cases doing. against those vloggers? Uh, again, like he said, no further legal action for now because okay. they want to mourning peace. Pero for now, sabi niya, mm -hmm. uh, masarap sana kung may isang masampulan man. Okay, for now. Tingnan natin okay. kung mababago yan in the near future. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. News 5 correspondent Brian Baza. Alright, wala na tayong oras, but it seems um, there's more bad news. Yung na, yung ako naman mag-deliver ng bad news. Lalo, lalo na, wala, lalo, si wala, wala si kasi si Regina, si Regina dito. Fine. <laughs> it seems, ito na yung bad news. Back to paper na. Ang mga magpaparenew ng mga lisensya dyan. Yung yung, babatuhin ng papel. Ayan. Our big picture tonight is the sample printout of a temporary driver's license. Why? Well, because it seems nga that the delivery of 4 million plastic cards for driver's licenses is again facing delays. The Land Transportation Office said the donated card supply from the Philippine Society of Medicine for Drivers needs to undergo verification still, which could take two to three more weeks. I oh. license ko. last year, but at the end of the year, may hack yan eh. Kailangan oh, oh. mo yung office na mas konti yung demand. Yes. Oh, oh, there are branches that can print those cards and they're branches that have run out. And how do you find those Matatawag branches? Matatawag ka. Tumingin ka sa mga ano, Facebook Kung group na nilalagay nila dito. Mm -hmm. oh, isa dun sa Para SM North meron. Sa Yupi Town. Pero ako na ngayon. Huwag mo na sabihin. Ay, sorry. Ayun na. Huwag mo na sabihin. Magpapapunta mo na si Masa. Magpaparinyo muna kami. Meron, meron. Nakakuha ko ng may card. Alright. You have to be smart here. You have to be smart here. So, pwede na natin siya ng siwa Okay, wala na tayo talagang oras. That's it for the big story on this Monday night. We are one news all sides all the time. Thanks everyone. Good night.